is the basic sulfide cation um, group. And uh, we are only in this experiment and the lab manual. And all the explanation is in the lab manual. You also see the, uh, you are going to watch the video in order to, to answer these, um, you know, to find out, to record your observation. The pre-lab, the purpose of the pre-lab discussion is for you to be able to answer some questions from the pre-lab quiz, which is based on what type of reaction is going to take place, what is the evidence of this reaction, what color is going to be the precipitate. So this pre-lab discussion is going to help you with the pre-lab quiz. For the actual experiment, there's another video that you're watching and the experiment, I performed the experiment, you watch it carefully and you record your, uh, your observation. The three ions that we are going to analyze as the sulfide groups, they are um, iron, manganese, and chromium. So these are the three, um, three ions. They are, they are known as, they are not the only ions for the sulfide group, but we are only, uh, in this experiment, we are analyzing only these three of them. If you learn the concept that you can selectively uh, precipitate, and then you can selectively dissolve one sample at a time, or if one stays in the aqueous solution and you can separate it, um, then when you have a procedure, you can actually uh, Follow the procedure and identify more than three ions. The idea is to learn the basic and gain the basic knowledge of the selective precipitation and using the solubility property of each of these ions in different acidic or um, basic solution in order to separate and be able to identify them. So, in the first step, we are selectively precipitating um, iron and manganese using sodium hydroxide. When you add sodium hydroxide, iron is going to precipitate as the, the ferric um, hydroxide, a brown color, and then manganese is going to precipitate also uh, as a MnOH2 or manganese hydroxide. And uh, chromium, what happens to chromium? If you have like if you add ammonia or if you precipitate this with a weak base, the chromium hydroxide is going to precipitate. But since we are using excess amount of the hydroxide, it's going to give us a complex of CrO4 minus, and this complex is soluble in, uh, in water or it gives like an aqueous solution. So this is a is coming from chromium three plus and it's a, it's a green color, um, and uh, what happens here when you add the sodium hydroxide, the Fe is going to precipitate as the Fe um, OH three. This is going to precipitate. Mn will precipitate. Okay, Mn will precipitate, and chromium is going to stay in solution. And because it's aqueous, now you have a test tube with precipitate and an aqueous solution. What you have in the aqueous solution is going to be the chromium ion. And what you have in the precipitate one is going to be the mixture of the other two ions. You would have the fer um, ferric hydroxide and manganese two um, hydroxide mixture in here. So if you centrifuge, and you separate the, uh, the chromium ion, uh, you can then identify and confirm presence of, of chromium or presence and absence or absence of chromium if you're dealing with the unknown, with the unknown sample. Uh, chromium, because it's a chromium tree, so, so you centrifuge, you have your aqueous solution part that it contains chromium uh, three plus. This chromium three plus is going to be oxidized by adding um, hydrogen peroxide in a basic solution, it will change the chromium three to chromium six or chromium is going to change to the chromate ion. Now, when you have the chromate ion, the solution is going to change to like yellowish color, but that's not easy to confirm. So for to make sure that 
uh, we, the presence of, of chromium is confirmed, we are adding barium chloride. So if you add barium chloride to, to the um, chromate, a yellow color precipitate, it will form like suddenly, and you that is the, the confirmation for presence of, of the um, chromium. Um, so you get the, it goes back that yes, your solution contained uh, chromium um, three plus. What you identify is this chromium six plus based on the procedure because chromate, it gives like distinct and very obvious precipitate, yellow color precipitate with the barium chloride. Uh, but um, it, it goes back to presence of um, chromium ion. Now that you test the uh, test the uh, chromium presence or absence of the chromium, then we need to also uh, identify and al analyze iron and manganese. To identify uh, manganese and uh, an iron, uh, because it's a, it's a mixture now, they are mixed in a, in a test tube, in a precipitate. So you have both of them in there. Um, so you are going to add nitric acid. What's the purpose of nitric acid? The nitric acid is going to dissolve this. Why? Because this solution, this uh, precipitation took place in basic solution. That's what I mean by selective precipitation. In a high pH, uh, these two ions are going to precipitate, but if you lower the pH when you by adding strong acid, they are not going to precipitate. So they are going to go back into the into the solution. So with the nitric acid, it will give you the ferric nitrate and manganese nitrate. So we have them in the in the solution because both of them both of them dissolved now. Uh, we cannot centrifuge to separate them. So after it's dissolved, what we are going to do if it's, if it's dissolved, um, so we are going to then divide them in two separate test tubes. In one test tube, you add half of it in one test tube and the other half to another test tube. So you have both manganese and, and uh, iron ion, both of them in this um, each of the test tubes but depends on what reagent you add, you can identify each of them separately. So both test tubes is going to contain both ions, but the reagent which you are adding is specific to identify each one separately. So to one of the test tubes, to one of these test tubes, if you add sodium bismuthate, Sodium bismuthate is not going to give distinct color with iron. It would only react with manganese and is going to oxidize the manganese to permanganate and permanganate is going to be purple color. So after adding sodium bismuthate, if you see the purple color, that means the manganese was present in your solution the original sample that you got. Similarly to the second test tube or the second aliquot that you have, which contains both Fe and uh, the iron ion and the manganese ion, uh, manganese two ion, and you have both of them to this test tube. Now you're adding um, potassium thiocyanate. When you add potassium thiocyanate to this second test tube, potassium thiocyanate is not going to react with manganese, doesn't give any distinct color or precipitate with manganese, but with iron is going to give like a bloody red color complex. And that bloody red color complex indicates that iron is present. Iron ion, Fe3 plus is present. If you see that, bloody red color. Okay, so basically you are going to selectively uh, precipitate, selectively dissolve, and if they all dissolve, you separate them in different aliquots, and then you identify each one of them using specific um, reagents. And that's about the, the uh, sulfide group, only three ions that we are identifying. Oh,